Okay, hello everyone. So uh, I would like to apologize, you know, um, because it took me some time to actually uh, continue uploading my videos. Alright, uh, I know that your trials will be coming soon. So uh, I will try my best to upload the remaining chapters uh, for your Form 5 Physics and also your Form 5 Chemistry uh, you know, as fast as possible. Hopefully that it can help you all to revise, you know, um, for your trials. Right. Okay. Let us continue with this part, uh, which is the induced current part. All right. So before we go into this part, right, actually we need to really understand what we are learning here. Okay. The comparison between what we learned previously in three point two, and what we are learning now in three point three. Okay. So in three point two, what we are learning is that we are using electricity. All right. To produce motion. Okay. We are using current to produce motion. So an example, uh, is that. If you put a battery inside the toy car and then you on, then the car moves, right? So that is what you learn in 3.2. But right now in 3.3, what we are learning is the opposite. Okay, we are actually using motion, right, to generate electricity. Okay, so uh, an example of uh, what we call induced current. Okay, this is what we call induced current. Huh? Is your wind turbine and also your water dam. So I'm sure you know, right, when your wind turbine rotates, right, they will generate electricity. Same goes for your water dam, okay? If you look at the part here, which I'm circled right here, right, when the water comes in from the reservoir into the turbine, the turbine will start to rotate. When the turbine rotates, the generator here is going to generate the electricity, okay? So in this part, in 3.3, what you're going to learn is how do we generate electricity without and using any uh, what they call uh, energy source or electrical energy okay so this is what we call induced current okay so if we say induced meaning we produce that's the meaning of the word all right so uh, to produce an induced current we need two things one is a magnet one is a conductor or normally what we use is your uh, wires or your coils all right okay so that is why the name if you see here is called electromagnetic induction so basically we are using a magnet and a conductor to produce electricity okay that is what we call induced current all right so how do we produce uh, an induced current okay now if you look at the sentence here right a conductor which cuts across a magnetic flux what in the world is magnetic flux all right it's basically your magnetic field Okay, if you look at the diagram right here, right, the magnetic field here is what we call uh, a, a magnetic flux. All right, if you change the magnetic flux, meaning if there is a change in the magnetic field, uh, you are going to produce electricity or current. In that is what we call induced current. So, the idea to produce an induced current is very simple. The conductor, meaning the wire here, must cut through the magnetic field. Meaning, if you have a conductor and you have a magnet. All right. If you cut across the magnetic field like this, like what he's doing right here, moving up and down, you are going to produce the induced current. Okay. Now, before I show you the what I call simulation, all right, on how to produce an induced current. Okay. If you look at the two diagrams here, okay, you will notice it looks almost uh, the same. It's very similar with one major difference, which is right here, this and this. All right, so in other words, this one we are using uh, what we call battery to produce motion. So the conductor will start to move up and down when you connect to a battery. This is what you learn in 3.2. Okay, this is your Fleming's left hand root. All right, this is left hand. Okay, what we are learning here, the uh, what we call uh, induced current, we are usually using Fleming's right hand. <clears throat> okay, so how to identify? Okay, the problem that uh, you know a lot of students have said before, they don't. Some of them are not sure when to use the left, when to use the right. So you need to identify is which component. Okay, you need to know whether uh, are we generating electricity, or are we using electricity to produce a force. Okay, so if anything that has to do with generating electricity, meaning if you look at your setup, right, there is no energy source here. If you notice, right, there is no battery, there is no power source, nothing. Okay, only a magnet with a coil attached to a galvanometer. Sometimes they will put as light bulb. 
Okay, so looking at that, immediately I know that this is generating electricity, so it's right hand. If it's like this, okay, I'm using a battery to produce a force or a motion, okay, this one will be left hand. Okay, so the basic idea is like that. Okay, when to use right hand, when to use left hand. Alright, so for induced current, there are two types of setup that we normally use. One is this one, a straight wire. Okay, we cut across the magnetic field. Alright, another one is this one. Okay, solenoid. Okay, so basically there are two different setups for uh, induced current. Okay, using a straight wire cut across magnetic field. Or you have a solenoid, okay, meaning coils of wire, and then the magnet moving in and out. Okay, so uh, let's look at a simulation, all right, just to show you the uh, what they call uh, what they call uh, induced current. Okay, so as you can see here, right, when the magnet moves in and out, you are going to produce current. That's why the light bulb will light up. Can you see this? All right. So this is what we call induced current. Basically, you just take a conductor, you move through the magnet. So as you cut across the magnetic field, meaning there is a cut, doesn't matter how you cut it, as long as you cut, then you are going to produce electrical current. All right. So next, we are going to show you is this one. Okay, you have a magnet. So if I want to produce a current, I just take a conductor, I cut in the middle like this. Okay, if you look at my mouth, which is moving up and down, right? Okay, so basically, let me just skip a little bit. Okay, let's see what. Okay, so this is a conductor or a wire, lah. Alright, so if you see, if you cut up and down like this, alright, then you are going to generate electricity. So basically, you are going to produce an induced current. Okay, so remember, to produce an induced current, you need a conductor, cut up and down, then that's it. Then you produce an induced current. Alright, okay. Da -da -da. So if you see here, right, uh -huh. cut up and down, then you produce a current. So in this case, we are using the right hand rule. All right, so I'm just going to show you the right hand rule here. Okay, as you can see here, right, the designation is still the same. All right, your thumb is still using force. Your first finger is your magnetic field, north to south. Your middle finger shows you the direction of the current. Okay, so if we pause here, all right. So if I am moving the conductor up, so you point your thumb upwards, all right? So remember, when we use left or right hand, the first thing that we always set is the first finger first. You always set this first, all right? Once it's set at this, at this direction, do not change uh, your shape anymore, okay? Meaning you just leave it like this, all right? And then lock it, okay? So the only thing that you'll be doing is rotating. If you can see what I'm doing right now, I'm rotating my fingers only. So set your first finger, lock it, then just rotate up or down only. All right. In this case, it's pushing upwards, right? Okay, so here it's going upwards. Okay, so your current is moving towards you. That's why the arrow here. Okay, so that is how you use your right hand root. All right, so let's show you another one if the force is going down. All right. Okay, so if the force is pointing downwards, all right, okay, remember we lock your first finger, the force pointing downwards, so I'm just going to rotate the thumb downwards, okay, we are only going to rotate the thumb downwards, you don't change the shape of your fingers, all right, once you lock it, you just fix it, okay, so as you push downwards, right, okay, so meaning I'm just going to rotate my thumb and then I'm just going to point downwards like this. Okay, so you see, I have the same shape as the one in the video. Alright, so meaning that your current now is going into the screen. Uh, not into the screen, into the paper. Lah. So meaning it's on the opposite direction. Okay, so just a basic recap on what you have done before. Alright, this is from another view. Okay, so if you were to use your right hand rule here. Alright, so... Remember, fix north to south. Okay, so moving up down. Right, right hand rule. Ah. Okay, so your force now is going upwards. Alright, force going upwards. Your magnetic field is north to south. It's like this. So later, they are going to show you the placement of your right hand, your flaming's right hand rule. Alright. Oh, it's a little bit slow. Okay, okay, so there you are.
all right so if you see here right your fingers north to south so always fix this first then you follow the direction of the force then you will know the direction of your current okay so it's going to be moving from left to right all right so that is your Fleming's left hand rule oh yeah sorry right hand rule oh my god <laughs> okay so two uh, what they call different setups uh, for a induced current one is a straight one one is the coil all right okay so uh, what they call let's go on to the this one okay deflection all right for your exam right uh, for exam purposes i'm just going to discuss a little bit for exam purposes now if you attach the wires to a galvanometer right and if you start moving up and down the galvanometer will actually start to deflect so you either move left or right okay the direction is not fixed okay i hope that you all understand that the direction or the deflection of the galvanometer is actually not fixed so when the wire moves downwards all right you will see that the needle deflects to the right but this is not fixed this is only an example all right maybe if you move downwards the needle will deflect to the left okay it depends all right but the idea is like this if the wire moves downwards meaning if the wire moves towards number two here downwards huh? all right downwards okay then the needle deflects to the right so if i move upwards okay if i move to position number one i move up meaning the needle will deflect to the left just remember it's always opposite direction okay very easy to remember all right Wherever, uh, if you change your direction, the needle will also change its uh, deflection to the other side. Okay, and then if you move three to four, right? Meaning if you, if, if I were to draw my magnet like this, okay, uh, let me show you my kindergarten drawing. Okay, this is magnetic field, uh, something like this. Uh. Alright, so, so let's say now your wire is moving three, four. If you look at the number here, three, four, and it's moving like this, horizontal. Okay, so if you notice it's parallel to your magnetic field, right? So it's not cutting. Not cutting meaning no current here, no induced current here. If you see here, horizontal sideways, no deflection, no current generated. Okay, if I want to produce current, it must cut. Cut, cut, no matter how I cut. As long as I got cut, then I got current. Okay, so that is the idea of induced current. Alright, okay. So let us look at this one. A solenoid okay now for a solenoid okay we need to know uh, how the current moves meaning when the magnet goes near to the solenoid right where will the needle deflect now this one will require uh, the knowledge that we have learned in your three pointer which is your right hand grip rule okay so before i know the right hand grip or before i use the right hand grip rule i need to know the uh, what they call pole of my magnet first now the idea is very very simple if here is north here is south when it goes to the magnet it will change to the same pole meaning this side here will also become north if here is north here is also north then here will become south okay so this is actually your land law right so later we're going to look into the land law but i'm just going to give you a brief intro first okay i just let you know the concept first if here is north, meaning the solenoid here is also north. It is always the same. If here is south, here also becomes south. All right. Now, once I know that this is north, then I need to use my right hand grip rule. Okay. Remember your right hand grip rule, your thumb is pointing towards the north. So I'm going to use this fella here. All right. Okay. Maybe just move up a little bit. Okay. Like this. Ah, okay. Right. So remember that your right hand grip rule, thumb is pointing to the north. So if you see here, right, my fingers is going to curl like this. Okay, meaning it's going to curl down. All right, curl like this. That's why if you notice, the direction is going downwards. Okay, so I know that this one. So then you follow the uh, what they call you follow the wire go up and down goes down. Then then I know that this needle will deflect to the right. Okay, you need to know where the needle will go okay they will ask you in your exam uh, objective also they will ask you to do this all right so that is it okay very simple okay so let's check uh, if we use a different uh, what they call different pole right what happens when we use a different pole 
okay so let's change here let's look at the bottom one all right now when you go in if here this is north this is also north right now if you move out okay once you go out right when here is north here will become south so you remember a basic simple idea go in same pole go out different pole that's it end of story all right this is your lens law actually okay so when your magnet moves out right different pole so if here is north here will become south so i know my north is here so if i know my north is here i'm going to take my right hand grip rule here i'm going to point uh, my thumb to the north which is like this okay thumb to the north all right oops okay and then you will see that my fingers will call inwards right i'm going to call like this huh? you need to coiling like this going in like this okay that is why if you notice the direction is going inwards we are curling inwards all right so if you follow the direction of the wire you will see that it will come out through here and then pass through like this right that's why the needle will deflect to the left okay all right so it's a very uh, simple concept okay lens lock of course if both is not moving you do not produce current all right so not necessarily uh the magnet moves you can also move the solenoid okay uh you just apply the same concept okay if here is north here is also north just remember as you go in same terminal uh, same pole as you go out different pole okay so that is actually your lens lock all right so in 3.3 we have two laws one is faraday one is lens okay i don't need to show you the uh, fleming's right hand rule it's the same uh what they call the same designation just a different hand okay this is still force this is still magnetic field this is still current okay so two laws here faraday and lens law all right so uh, from one point of view uh again when to use left when to use right there are certain things that allows me to identify number one of course is based on the diagram that i taught you just now all right we look at whether one has a battery or one has a light bulb okay now the second thing is i will look if whether any of this law is mentioned just remember if it's about faraday's law or lance law then this is about right hand rule immediately i know that this is about induced current okay so your questions will definitely give you hints on which law you should use uh, which hand rule you should use all right once you see faraday's law dance law induce current right hand rule straight away okay now of course definition i'm not a big fan of definition i don't like definitions but in your sdm no choice they want you to give the exact definition so you need to actually memorize the sentence like this huh? okay but uh to make you understand or to make it easy for everyone to understand all right basically uh, faraday's law is saying is that if you change the magnetic flux uh much or if you change a lot of the magnetic flux you are going to produce a high induced current so meaning that if i cut the magnetic flux very fast if i cut very fast then i'm going to produce a large induced current okay all right <clears throat> ah this is important okay point two and point three magnetic increases about okay this is factors okay in the exam they'll ask you about the factors that affects the production of the induced current how to increase induced current or how to decrease the induced current you have these two factors but these two factors are for different setups remember we have two setups right one is straight one is solenoid okay so the first factor here this is for straight wire or straight conductor all right okay this is for a wire straight wire okay the second one is for coil meaning this factor is for solenoid all right so you need to use the proper what they call uh, explanation okay if they ask for the factors for straight wire how to increase the induced current of a straight wire but then you go and put this sentence here the number of turns increase for a straight wire this is wrong okay because it's a different factor right it's a different setup okay so just identify uh which uh what you call a uh, setup which factor okay just just bear in mind right don't use number of turns for a straight wire because it's straight it's not a coil so number of turns is not a factor right logic okay Ugh, <laughs> all right so lens law okay if you look at the definition 
uh, the direction of blah 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 always oppose. So it's always like this. Okay, like I said, when you go in, same code. When you go out, it becomes a different pool. You see here, this is not this is out. All right. So Lens law is basically like uh, if I were to use an, uh, an example, it's basically like a relationship. All right. When a guy chases a girl that he likes. Okay, but the girl, you know, maybe he doesn't really like him. Okay, so when the guy chases the girl, then the girl says, nah, he's not really my type. So, repel. Don't like. Repel. See, same pool, ah. repel. Okay, but when the girl suddenly sees the guy changes his target, oh, when you chase another girl, then the girl starts to feel, eh, I thought you said you like me, then when you go, you chase another girl, then she starts to attract back the guy again. Alright, so here you see, attract again. So, it's like, I don't want you to chase me, but I also don't want you to chase other girls. Complicated. Alright, but yeah, lah, that's the thing. Lah. Okay, so basically, uh, Lance Law is saying that uh, when, the, when the magnet is going into the solenoid, right, the poles are the same. So you will have a repulsive force here. Okay, on the other side, when it comes out, right, you are going to produce an attractive force. Okay, just remember. <coughs> okay, and then the direction of the needle remember if this is north meaning my thumb is pointing this way right okay i'll show you kindergarten drawing again oh ho, 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 my god okay oh my god my drawing is so bad okay so thumb this way so meaning i'm curling in like this that's why you see here it's going up like this okay so you need to follow the wire yeah? you need to follow the arrangement of the wire to know the needle will deflect left or right Okay, so if it's the other way around, so uh, if I change pole, meaning my direction will also change. Lah. Okay, very easy to remember. Alright, so that is your length lock. Okay, just remember, in, same pole, out, different pole. Okay, and then uh, the force of attraction or force of repulsion. Alright, sometimes they will ask this in your exam. Okay, so factors, I don't need to go into detail. Uh, just remember that if you want to produce an, a higher induced current, of course your speed, okay, or what you call the motion, the cutting motion here must be fast. When you cut fast, you produce uh, what you call a high induced current. If you use a strong magnet, you produce high induced current. Okay, for straight wire, there's one thing that is different, which is cutting angle. Okay, you need to know that the maximum current produced is at 90 degrees, maximum current, meaning when I cut, it must be 90 degrees lesser or more than 90 degrees the current will be uh, what they call is will not be your max current it will be lower okay just remember for a straight wire all right cutting angle 90 degrees this is your maximum current okay all right so for uh, what they call solenoid okay the only thing that is different is the number of turns lah. okay number of turns of course the more turns you have the higher the current that you are going to produce okay so not going to go into too much of your factors all right this is the part okay uh, the generators okay so in 3.2 we learn about DC motor okay so you need to uh, you need to remember if it's motor all right the only thing that is different is here oops I like them pull up. All right, motor here is different. Okay, if for motor, right here will be battery, not a uh, galvanometer. Okay, so how to identify? Again, the same thing. Okay, we look at the diagram. If here is a battery, meaning if they show me like this, then this thing becomes a motor, not a generator. Okay, so I always look at what I have here. All right, so if it's generator right hand if it's motor left hand just remember this okay so your job is to identify whether the picture the diagram given is about motor or generator so i'm repeating this like again and again like a burung kakak too man look at this one what is this okay look at here all right battery motor okay but of course for motor you don't have an ac motor huh? you only have one motor dc motor okay all right <clears throat> so for uh, dc generator and ac generator okay we are just going to look at the simulation okay faster like it'll be e easier for you to understand okay looking at the simulation all right <clears throat> okay 
So this is a example of a DC generator. Remember, if we say generator, meaning we produce electricity. All right. Now this is a basic uh, what they call part of a DC generator. You have a magnetic, uh, you have a magnet. Okay, and then the magnet. Important ah, uh, shape of the magnet must be curvature, cannot be straight. If it's straight, the amount of induced current that you produce is very low. This will help you produce a higher maximum current, right? It must be curvature. Okay, so we are just going to see how a DC generator function and how we apply your right hand rule. All right, so these videos are actually very good. I'm going to link the video in my description. So if you want to look at the full video, you can just go to the video. You know, I believe that um, this is a rather good video for you guys. All right, so I'm just going to skip to this part. Okay, so for a DC generator, we will have a commutator, all right, and then in the middle we will have a gap. Okay, so remember to produce an induced current, my coil must cut. So if you see it's cutting, right? Okay, let me just reverse back again. So the coil is cutting the magnetic field. Okay, so now our job is to identify the direction of the current. Okay, I'm just going to stop here. All right, so if you notice, right, this is moving up. Now we are setting that AB is moving up. All right. So if you use your right hand rule, okay, thumb is pointing upwards, same direction. All right. Your first finger is always north to south. So your current is moving in, meaning the current is moving from A to B. All right. So let's look at the video. All right. So you can see here, force is moving up because now we are rotating it clockwise. So remember, now we are using motion to produce. Uh, current right so we need to know where are we going so since this is clockwise meaning a b is moving up okay force moving so current is going from a to b okay so we are rotating clockwise huh? can you rotate bro all right for c d is different <coughs> okay because your arm is going downwards right so your thumb is also pointing downwards okay so this is showing for c d huh? Right, time is also pointing downward, so your current is moving from C to D. Okay, so if you were to look at the simulation, okay, so that is the direction of your current. All right, okay, so this is the graph for a DC current. All right, so if you see when the ring starts to rotate, this is the current. Now, the main idea here is like this I'm going to just stop, oh, just a little bit more. Okay, so if it's rotating cut then you produce a induced current right so this is the graph for dc current. remember for a dc generator your current is only moving in one direction so if you notice the blue lines they are only turning in one direction okay if i were to rotate anti-clockwise then it will move the other direction okay that is the meaning of your dc generator okay now for a dc generator all right okay if you notice the graph here this is you need to identify the graph okay this is the graph for a dc generator right meaning there's no negative part it's always on positive only i just want to highlight one main point here okay this main point is uh, it's, it's very important it can help you solve a lot of questions okay if you notice <coughs> normally when it's vertical like this your current is zero when your what they call our armature is flat horizontal right this is your maximum current if you see here all the vertical one current is zero notice here zero 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 all right so when it's vertical uh normally you're induced normally meaning there's no induced current okay and then when it's horizontal that is where you will get your maximum current uh -huh. okay so your job is to actually identify the rotation motion, all right? So if you see here, okay, this one, if you use your right hand rule, you can try yourself. If you use your right hand rule, all right, if right now I'm rotating clockwise. So for right hand rule, we must know where we go first, okay? We need to know the direction of the force in order for us to identify where the current will move, all right? It's okay if you if you're still a little bit confused, all right. You can just go to the video that I just linked in the description, all right. It's a very good video. From there, you can actually understand how how they actually rotate, all right. Now we are going to look into 
EC generator. Okay, EC generator is a little bit different. Uh -huh. I'm sure some of you have seen this before. This is what we call a generator. If you go to Pasar Malam, you will see people using this. And then how we start this thing, we need to pull, right? Then I need to pull a few times. Okay, so this is applying what we learn, right? We need to have motion to generate electricity. So basically, if I keep pull, 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 it starts to turn. Once it starts to turn, then it starts to produce electricity. So this is your AC generator. Okay, so we are going to look at the structure of an AC generator. All right. So as you can see here, right, when this starts to rotate, you are producing current. Okay, this video is really good. All right. Uh -huh. So here they show you the uh, what they call the solenoid effect just now. Okay, the Lenz law. Remember, alright. So when the magnet moves in, it will detect. When it moves out, it detects to the opposite direction. You see. Okay, this is just now the Lenz law that we have just learned. Alright. Okay, so they are going to show you the parts of an AC generator. So we have this is what we call an armature lah, the arm here. Alright. And then, uh, basically, it's made from your core, la, your wires, your calls. This is your shaft. Okay, meaning the thing that we need to turn. Alright. So once we start to turn, then it will spontaneously, continuously to turn. Then you'll produce a, a what we call induced current. La. Okay, let me just rotate. Okay, this is what we call slip rings. So for an EC generator, you have two slip rings. Alright, for a DC, you only have one, I would call the commutator, but here we have two. Okay, so this allows the current to move in different directions. Alright, so as you can see here, right, the needle is deflecting right and left. So this is a AC current. Okay, so let's look at how they function. Alright, so uh, they are going to show you the, what they call a uh, right hand rule as well, the Fleming's right hand rule. Alright. So first things first, now they are rotating it clockwise. So as you can see, it's going right, left, right, left like this, right? So you have a positive current and then a negative value like this, right? This is an AC current. If it's a DC current, it will always be in the positive value one or always in the negative. Okay, all right, I'm just going to skip to this part right here where they show you the left uh, right hand rule. Okay, so right now I'm going clockwise, meaning AB is going up, CD is going down. Okay, so when EB is going up, okay, so if you see here, right now EB is going up, right? So my thumb must point upwards. Okay, magnetic field is always fixed, north to south, like this. You fix the magnetic field first, then we look at the thumb, alright? So your finger is pointing in, right? So meaning your current is now moving from A to B. Okay, meaning current is moving here. Okay, CD, because it's going downwards, right? So your thumb is pointing down. Okay, remember, don't change your finger. First finger, don't change. Once you fix north to south, fix it, we are just going to rotate it. Okay, so your current will be moving from C to D. Alright, so in this cycle, your current is moving from A, B, C, B. Alright, I believe they're going to show you, if you can see here, yeah, that is how your current moves. Alright, no change. Okay, because remember, vertical, no induced current. And when it starts to move, okay, you see slowly your current goes up. And then when it reaches the horizontal point, right here, pop, this is your maximum current. Okay. And then when you continue the motion, all right, it's going to continue the motion, you see. Then you will start to go down because different direction already. If you see your galvanometer is always also starting to go in a different direction. Huh? Alright. Vertical. Zero. Okay. And then they are going to continue going downwards. And then going upwards again. Alright. So that is your alternating current. Okay. Alright. When it's vertical. No current, when it's horizontal, maximum current. Okay, and then when it reaches the other way, meaning initially it's like this, right? Uh, let me see where is my starting point, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so here is CD, right? Like this. And then when I make a full 180 degrees rotation, it goes to the other way, the other direction. 
okay so basically that is your uh, DC generator and also your EC generator all right uh, the main idea is to identify the direction of your or what you call or the direction of the current based on the armature okay now these examples that you have seen is when the armature is moving clockwise so if the armature is moving anti-clockwise then everything will be the ballet it will be the other way around so you need to look carefully at your question whether it's rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise okay so this is your induced current <coughs> okay so bottom line okay motor left hand rule uh, what we call generator right hand rule okay i always teach uh, uh learn to remember this one all right left hand then a motor right hand generator okay all right so that is it for your uh induced current okay okay let's look at the first one here all right all right uh moves on the left okay so now they tell me the force all right so how do i know whether it's left or right hand remember the first thing i look is this one this is a galvanometer or maybe they use a light bulb meaning i know that this is an induced current so i need to use the right hand root okay so first things first you fix your first finger not too south all right and then your force is going this way okay then it will be like this thing if you can see me all right so meaning now my current is going in okay meaning my current is going from p to q that is the direction of my induced current all right so if i were to draw this in 2d it will be like this la. north uh, south north like this and then this is the conductor so this is moving to the left force so if you put your right finger right hand on top of this diagram right you will see that here so your current will be moving into the screen all right so you need to try out okay then only you can uh what do you call uh call that only you can fully understand how to use the left hand rule and right hand rule okay so i believe that is it for your uh that means right hand group all right uh of course it is a little bit difficult you know uh just to show you through a video like this all right so but hopefully uh through the video that you have seen uh, that i just showed earlier on right it can roughly help you to understand how you should actually use your right hand rule so uh just remember the basic concept or the basic idea once you fix your direction of your magnetic field okay meaning if you already fix that this is already fixed like this right if you can see through your uh, through my video here through my cam right once i fix the direction of my magnetic field you do not ever ever change it anymore meaning you are only allowed to rotate it 360 degrees that is it okay a lot of problems with the students is that uh, which i have seen is that when they fix the what they call a magnetic field right but because when they change the direction of the force they also follow and change like this so don't ever do this once you fix here you only rotate it don't let it turn anymore just turn 360 don't let it change up and down okay so this is very important once you fix this right then you will be able to correctly identify the direction of the induced current okay so um i hope that this one will help all right i know that it might not be a really what they call a very good video okay but hopefully it can help you all to you know understand a little bit all right um, if you have any questions you can just leave it in the comments below and i will try my best to answer you right so that is it for this part i am going to continue the transformer part in the next video okay right bye